What if we brought the U.S. military industrial complex to the Victorian era? Well, that's exactly what we are going to attempt to do today. Hi, my name is Syntergate, and let's let the past me explain it further. Basically, the goal is to make as many small arms, ammunition, anything the military could use. We want to make it, and we don't want to just have a huge internal market. We want to be able to spread that market. We want to basically be the main provider of weapons and arms to every nation in the world. If you're not buying out arms, you don't have arms. There are no arms outside of the United States. We want to establish the military industrial complex in the 1800s and early 1900s, pre-World Wars. So to do that, there is a couple stages. First off, we already have a bit of a market. We already trade most of our weapons away to a bunch of South American nations. That is how we keep our arms industries up. There's a lot of nations out there, for example, such as Great Britain. They don't need more arms at this time. They already produce more than they can handle, and they trade a lot of it away. They trade it in their own internal markets. Um, but whenever one of these nations go to war, that's going to pop up. They're going to need more. And also, we're at the beginning stages of the game, which means their armies are relatively small. So, basically, there's a three-step plan to be able to dominate the world with our military industrial complex. The first stage is to establish our own internal market. Right now, we trade a lot of our firearms away. We're basically giving them out to South American nations. That's all we are doing. Uh, we don't have a very large military because we are running the laws of <clears throat> national militia, uh, basically the National Guard in the United States. We need to establish a professional army so we can have a larger standing army that would constantly purchase our own firearms just to make it so our arms industries are initially profitable. Part two, we got to get established into the markets of our enemies. So if we click on them, we can see almost every European power other than Prussia is producing more than what they currently need standing for firearms. Uh, sometimes it's also boats, other things. We are going to be interested in establishing and getting all of that. <clears throat> we want to get into these markets. And now there's a couple ways we can. So we're going to forcibly trade with them at some point with very cheap firearms. So that they buy our firearms, but instead of as many of their own. We're going to slowly try to run their businesses out but it's not going to be as successful. Their business is always going to get priority. They're going to stick around. But what I have seen is, let's say the British here. Yeah. The British are going to expand their military to be now 105, but eventually 400, 500 soldiers. The French, same thing. Prussians, same thing. Austrians, same thing. They're all going to have hundreds and hundreds of battalions. And the way we are able to get into the market is we make it so every time they grow their military, they don't need to build more arms industries because they're going to buy them from us. All right, so they won't buy arm in arms industries because they already have too much supply. Their too much supply should come from us. Eventually, we will be the predominant arms manufacturer providing to them. So once that's done, that is step two. Step three is simply profit. Profit basically means we're going to make money off of these places. In step two, we might lose a lot of money, but we're going to make money. But more importantly, there will be no power in the world that could oppose us because if they go to war with us, quite simply, they will not have enough weapons because they will immediately lose all the weapons we're trading with them. The military will run our guns, run our ammo, run our artillery, and we will just steam all over them because there's nothing they could do. So that is our goal, to spread the military industrial complex and win. Now, I did try this a little bit in the 1.5 beta. I love a lot of what the beta is doing, but uh, it's not fully set up and established yet. Um, and the uh, economics of our military goods is not very easy to understand. It seems like there's a basic level of arms that every country now needs. But what ends up happening is... I've seen countries go to war and that, that level doesn't increase. And that means you basically just have to maintain a certain amount 
and it's not as good. When Russia and Prussia go to war, I want to be able to slip in there and make a huge profit off of them. And I couldn't do that in the beta. Also, at the same time, the beta ended with me uh, in that playthrough uh, acquiring the uh, East Indian Company for joining a war with Britain. They gave it to me. And uh, after laughing my butt off for a little while, I, I couldn't really do it anymore. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is done. <laughs> I see how we win this. So first things first, we're going to want to make sure we're going to continue to export small arms to these nations. We do not have all the interests that we want. So first off, I'm going to remove all these southern ones. And we're going to establish one in Manchuria, one in Indochina. And then we're going to establish a bunch of these back. Next, we're going to go to military. We're going to want to just increase our, uh, our ability to produce rifles. We go straight for rifling. As it stands right now, it looks like for just basic goods, we're going to need some more wood. Iron is in a decent state, but we're going to want to use more of that. So right now, our construction is already on iron frame buildings. We are not even producing anything. Our iron is at okay which means the moment we start producing something our iron's no longer going to be okay so we gotta establish our iron belt right here in the modern day rust belt next we're also going to be looking at trying to get professional army right away most likely we will not be able to even though we can get oh we can't get them in this update in this build where the hell did the they don't exist. <laughs> they, they literally don't exist. The party I want is not here. Um, do we go a day and do they come back? Hello? Huh. I don't even see how to click on the marginal button. Okay, our military does not exist, apparently. So, Jacksonian Democrat. Yeah, the Democratic Party has a very strong hold over us right now. So, as it stands right now, unless we go to peasant levies, which would definitely be more ideal than national militia for what our goals are, but overall, not great. Um, we're going to try to dislodge the Southern Democrats and get dedicated police force pass. Early civil war is going to be better if, unless we can not have a civil war at all. Next, we're going to try to get some degrees placed around, social mobility in our most popular states there we go we're going to let the game run look at that we're already absolutely our iron we're going to import some from the british and we got the indian removal we we're going to have a bunch of inactive trade routes now because our interests are gone but with that we should be able to if i go to the trade lens export some small arms to the queen and the russians so let the game play the texans are going to be fighting sadly it doesn't appear they are going to win the first battle which means they're going to win none of the battles trade agreement with the british is something i am 100 percent fine with we do have an excessive amount of steel the british will gobble that up so we will give it to them we're already exporting firearms to a bunch of places but it's not enough we want to export early. The Siamese have a closed market, so we're going to eventually want to change that. Texas has fallen, and the People's Party has formed. Uh, free Trade Party, because that should be the industrious. I don't know where our military is. Are they just marginalized, or do they just not exist? They are marginalized, so they're not even going to be over here. That's how much our military does not matter. I'm going to try to export some ammunition to the British. There's no harm in trying. Um, Charles is our new president. Well, we'll check you out in a second. Can I get wood from Russia? We'll try that. Charles! Hello, Charles. How are you today? You're abolitionists. Oh, the evangelicals got in. That means we can have a People's Party plus the Whig Party together and the Southern Planters. That means we probably can do some stuff right away. Let's weaken the southern planters a bit more. We got four years to rock and roll. They're already mad. <laughs> That's not too bad of a civil war. It's not over slavery. Oh, Nebraska's having a bad day. Structuring industries. 
dedicated police force pass, they can suck it. Um, we can immediately go for that, but that will immediately cause us a civil war. <laughs> Quick civil war. British was already happy with us. We're gonna have to vote, yeah. We're gonna have tiptoe around this. By forcing a early civil war while we are weak, we prevent what would amount to a larger and more destructive and devastating conflict. So we're gonna see how bad this war will be. Um, before war pops up. <laughs> Don't worry about this. Boop, 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 boop. It's gonna be mostly conscripts anyways, but it is what it is. And we will quickly militarize the north a little bit more. Get the construction sector built. Because this is going to cause. That is pretty close to not causing civil war. But I don't think we will pass it. So the longer we can delay that, hopefully sooner we can pass. So we're feeling civil war. Um, I don't want the, I don't want Zachary Taylor to die, I don't think. Do I? No, he's part of Southern Planters. I think I do. Uh, boop. Nope. <laughs> he's not dead. Oh, that's not good. This might also give it a Indian removal if the entire south where the Cherokee's at. Maybe that's how I ended before. Give us the prestige. Because I think we're going to auto pass it once this war starts. There we go. For those hours, a bunch of places are ours. We're gonna activate all the conscripts. And we can. And we're gonna prepare for a quick war. Mobilize all generals. You yeah, have kidney stones. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hopefully that goes away. Looks like it's only the British and the Mexicans that can get involved. The British do not want to. Uh, we, even though this is supposed to happen halfway through the war. Uh, we're gonna ban slavery immediately. We have full legitimacy and we can push whatever we want right now. So first off, we're gonna go immediately into cultural exclusion. And no one's gonna join the war. People are gonna stay out of it. Confederate market. Let's see what they have. They don't have enough anything. They have not enough arms. Apparently neither do we. Oh, uh, we're gonna have to inactive a bunch of our trade routes. We'll come back to all of you soon. We have a large army there. We have a large army there. We're gonna get our navy to anaconda them. And we're gonna push. I think the capital is Virginia. We're gonna push for Virginia. Quick civil war will be the key to success. Right, we're in Virginia, they're going to be losing quite quickly now. Right into the hearts of the Confederates. We are fighting the Navy at the sea. They're occupied, we're breaking their spirits. And they will soon surrender. And the Civil War is done. Virginia is relatively devastated. Hopefully it never becomes that devastated again. But now we have rifling. We can produce a lot more weapons. Exclusion. After early civil war, I began to establish the U.S. as the dominant North American power. One thing though that I can probably press is uh, I can start manifesting my destiny. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're manifesting. Gotta turn all of those. Give me all of that. Only the British can get involved. <laughs> We have a lot of people. <laughs> what a single party state, apparently. The war folk are not a good people. <laughs> oh no. The People's Party is now like North Korea. The Democratic Republic of North Korea. Where the only thing true in both statements is one word. The word North and the word Party. <laughs> oh god. Money is going down the drain. We occupy the south now, so that's good. North is very angry. 
Hey, trade agreement. With the Chinese, this is really good. Export groceries. Oh, well, they're exporting meat. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Can't wait for pop-up simulator to end. Got the Democrats and the Republicans. AB is here now. Welcome, AB, a little bit uh, late to the party. We already uh, abolished slavery, but welcome, welcome. Uh, I would still like probably your policies. Democrats are very weak. That's exactly what we want. We're still exporting a ton of guns. A lot to the British. Um, a lot elsewhere. Artillery is a ton to the British. The British seem to rely on us for the artillery needs. And I can see why. They simply don't even have close to enough. And they're trading some away. That's fine. Buy our artillery and we sell it. Sure. You still bought our artillery. Right, we are now in Colombia. We're in lots of different places in Colombia. Hey! Bye, Dixie. Nothing we can do about that. I love all the USA flags. There we go. What are you doing, Russia, to the Japanese? Oh, you're gonna open the market. Oh, hell yeah, I'm gonna join you. Japan just surrendered it. Come on, Japan. Oh, yes, trade agreement from that. I'll let the Russians fight that war, though. We also began to establish new markets overseas in the form of China, Russia, and Japan. Oh, they're angry. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we are slaughtering them. Oh, that's not a good luck for you. Oh, it's not a good luck for the Russians when they ain't doing what we are doing. Alright, Japan. Um, you outnumber us quite a bit to one, but... um. There aren't great numbers for you, well that one's okay. What about up there? Oh. Oh no. Oh no, Japan. That's not good. Ooh, that's all. I think the Russians are open. Are they? No, no, we finally got, got- Nope, Russians are open. Maybe with our leadership. Look at this battle. Holy moly. Oh, we're gonna lose it. <laughs> Great for them. Uh, we're now in the south. We occupy a bunch of it. And we got it. Japanese markets have been open for more supplies of cocaine to come in. Wait a minute. Lawrence. <laughs> we said the cocaine addict. And he's ready for more cocaine. What the heck? Just gonna push forward. Right, we are producing a lot now. We just need to find more customers to buy our stuff. Alliance? Oh, Britain. Oh, Britain. That's kind of tempting. It's my infamy app. We can go into a war immediately. Go for the rest of Mexico. Yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna make Mexico into a dominion. Alliance. So, Italy is willing to join for a treaty port in um, Mexico. I'm not really opposed to that. Italy... Side it with us and then left. Why are you hostile now? And it's escalated to war. Let's see how those go. Alright, Mexico is ours now. Perfection. Increase taxes once again. Oh, that's unhealthy. So, personally, let the British fight out. The British will accept that. Sure. I don't care. I got Mexico. Around this time, I figured out that my trade was being limited by the lack of boats we have. So we began researching technologies to uh, remedy that issue. Can't trade more of these if we don't have enough boats for it. I would like industrial ports. Industrial ports does mean we're gonna need to build steamships. All right, we can produce more rifles now. Just need more boats to transport them on. 
So Russians definitely need it. There we go. Now we're trading a lot with them. We just needed more ships. Now I haven't built any of these ammunition plants. That's my own capitalist doing that. Good boys. Ah, we're increasing our trade outs by so much, but we're immediately trading out. Let's take a look now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We are trading like a mad lad now. Anyone else need weapons? Ah, our trade has increased substantially, and yet it still is not enough. How many boats do we simply need? We need a ton. We're gonna build more boats. American economy, we rely on this trade. Our economy, we're definitely taking a lot of um debt to build this much, but is what it is. We still have things we gotta trade. Trade routes. So we export holy moly, a lot of iron. I don't see anything else we immediately need. Alliance with the Russians. Do we still have our alliance with the British? No. I'm sorry, Russia, as much as I would love to, you're gonna lose. Is the Qing still part of your market? Yeah. We will do a defensive pack. See how our politics is doing. So, we still need to get professional army. The rural folks still vehemently oppose it. We're going to, uh... Follow Sakodo. They usually have a lot of people, and it usually ends up being overall decent. The battles have begun in the jungles of Africa. We sell so many cannons right now, mostly to the Russians. Oh. oh they do have the Chinese market, so that is good. They did start producing more of their own guns, sadly, but... Ah, uh, cannons. Alright, uh, as it stands right now, we export mostly artillery, some firearms, actually a lot of firearms, and a lot of ammunition. We're also exporting a lot of ships, but I don't think it's quite enough. We are number one producer of artillery in the world, but not by enough. Number one producer of ammunition, but that's getting close to not being enough. And then... Uh, for guns, Russia is now. We're neither producing enough for them. Ooh, Papa expanded. Oh my. Okie dokie. In my expansion southwards, the Austrians became involved in, well, American politics. Okay. <clears throat> I was not expecting the conquering of Ecuador to be, uh, bigger war than this, but I suppose this is what I get as fast as possible. Ecuador is already under partially our control. To push through the Amazons is going to be just brutal and deadly. So doing a naval invasion in the south is going to be a lot more effective. The French Republic seems to have been established during this time. Interesting. And there's a lot of wars happening. Perfect. The invasion of the south has worked. They are not ready for it. Right, they have surrendered. Russians really don't have any more grit in here anymore. But they will still fight. They might. The new American Navy. Let's see if we can land something. We might be intercepted soon. But if we can land on the Austrian shores, they are sure to surrender. We want to do this while the military is still occupied in Russia, before Russia says, Frick this war, we have no more stake in it. We were intercepted by one of them. The defense is high. Ooh. Both of them were intercepted. Damn. Here's what it is. Move on the Russian front. We can get those war reparations, that's all we want. And they are getting closer and closer because their loans are getting so high. They cannot afford this war. There is a reason why they cannot afford this war. They have a large military, so do we. But if we check right here. The cost of the material goods, especially the ammunition, is so high. Now, arms, we are not producing as much arms as we should be. But the ammunition is so high. Now if we check our own ammunition, our ammunition prices, 
are very low and we're still trading it foreign. We are still sending it to foreign markets everywhere. That our production has increased because we are consuming it ourselves. We are still making money off of it. We can hold this war much longer with a huge, huge army. Our army is massive. So we are able to conscript so many people into the National Guard. We probably have the largest army in the world at this point. Yes. Uh, outside of China. And look at that. We have now landed. Our monitors have broken through. And we are heading straight for the capital. We have to go around a little bit of border gore to do so. But this alone would make them want to surrender. They proposed white peace. I do not white, want white peace. I want concessions. And I will have them. Now the Russians seem to be now at war with the Prussians. So that is going to cause some issues. And I would not be surprised if they capitulate out soon. But we can get war operations. I don't care about the market as much. Um, so white peace, click on that. Propose peace deal. And there we go. Now, instantaneously, they are paying 40000 Now, is that worth the cost of the war? Nah, always. Mm, it's hard to say. Our people got enriched. We won the war. But big, big enough, we got Ecuador. That helps a lot. Our diplomatic packs are getting larger and larger and larger. Austria has been put in their pegs. It was worth the last little bit of effort and the test of our military. And we can check our military. You can see now our, our places, they desperately are like, oh no, we don't have that money anymore. We do not have that funding anymore. Trade agreement with the French. I mean, not the French, the Japanese. Oh no. Oh, ammunition's now the top. Holy cow, suffer. We got a uh, diplomatic play against us. We're going to ignore that. Holy moly. That is awesome. Munition plants and arms industries shall be supplemented. There we go. Wages are supplemented. It's going to be expensive. But now. Oh my god. <laughs> A ton of goods indeed. Holy cow. Alright. We're going to export the defense. It should be good. We're going to lose profits during this. But it's what we have to do. In order to gain the monopoly. We are now in stage 2. We have our basis of consumerism. We are now trying to just take over all these other markets now. We want our artillery to be the artillery of the world. We want our guns to be the guns of the world. We want to own all the means of the military industrial complex. And I bet you we can increase those numbers more if we immediately, immediately start trying to get more shipping. We're going to need more coastland, so I think that's going to be our next goal is to try to get coastland. Now if we check, we're reputable. That's a nice flag, Mexico. Um, uh, I think we can change the flag. You have a lot of coastline, and I need coastline. Mobilize all generals to the south. I do not even think we need to start conscripting, because if I check Mexico, it's 34 battalions. <laughs> they can conscript. We have a massive military. Only if someone else opposes us will this change anything. This is going to be expensive war, but we wish to make it quick. Now, there's a problem. Russia, you buy shit from us. You buy a lot of shit from us. Not only that, you're in the you're in a war with the French. Why are you involving yourself over here? We are trade partners, and you have screwed yourself. You have screwed yourself, Russia. I find the Russians, like the Mexicans, a little bit too much in this game. Don't know what to tell you because if we look at your market, 
Where does your ammunition come from? It comes from us. This is going to show you, Nikoi, where does your artillery come from? It comes from us. Where does, the only thing that doesn't is your guns, because you have to produce your own guns. So we're about to witness, truly, the fall of Russia. Because they're being stupid. We produce more artillery than we do guns. We produce so much stuff. I don't even think I need to conscript, because if the Russians come over here, it's just going to be easier to, for them to lose. I will do a little bit, because the Russians are here. Conscript a little bit, little bit, little bit. So what do they want? They just got obligations to join. So technically, I can ask war reparations on both of them. And we'll see what happens. Hey, Russia. Why haven't you embargoed us, Russia? Huh? I haven't even embargoed us. We are now at war. And with us at war, we can take a look. And see, the Russians have not enough ammunition. Now, does that does mean we aren't selling as much. We're going to drop very significantly, but we're still selling a bunch. We're still selling a bunch. We can find new places to sell to, and we'll probably sell a bunch elsewhere. Because look at that. We're already selling more to the British. <clears throat> We're already selling more to the British in all these regards. To the French. To your enemy, Russia. Go to military. Go to our Grand Navy. And we will invade. We will also invade you, Russia. You will not be able to face our might. But the Russian military has no cannons and has no ammo. They only have guns. They have lost so much already. And the penalty is only going up, only going up as the supply shortage increases. The defense is windling, the Austrians are windling. We are going to win this war. And there is nothing, nothing they can do to stop us. The invasion on St. Petersburg is happening. And they cannot hold it off, for they have no ammunition. They have no artillery. They have nothing that can withstand our military. So Caleb here is just going to waltz in. They are losing man over man over man over man. And most of our men will just demoralize. Like, oh, we're killing them too easily. Now we are in Russia. And want to know what happens when we're in Russia? Mexico is easily falling. They cannot withstand any of this. We're in the capital. Despite all the help internationally, we are in the capital. The Austrians want out. The Russians want out. Everybody wants out. It's over. It's over for them all. The Me Mexicans will capitulate any moment now. So there's nothing left they want to do. Oh no, the Russians are in my puppets. Whatever are we going to do? Nothing. Because there's nothing we need to do. Oh, we're now in your south. How unfortunate for you. And Mexico has, after this week, surrendered. There we go. Are the reparations really worth it, or do we go back to business as usual? That is the question. We're in the Russians' capitals, but... You know what? Go for peace. War is expensive. That is why we want you to buy from us. And after a little while, look how much the Russians are buying from us. Not as much as before. They tried to diversify the market a little bit. But they're coming back around. The artillery. Everything. Oh, France wants a trade agreement. Oh, perfect. We begin to establish ourselves as the international arms dealer. Alright, the Japanese are now part of our customs uh, union. Controlling so much of the flow of the military means it's so easy for these foreign powers to just become very instantly under supply. The British buy a bunch of stuff from us now. Look at that. They haven't been producing more because they're buying from us. That's what matters. Because our ammo is so much cheaper. So much cheaper. Now, it is costing us quite a bit. To be able to make it so cheap. But that's exactly what we want. We're going to pour our budget into it. Pour it in. We do need more ports. So we can uh, export more stuff. 
Right now, our most profitable thing is the fact that we produce so much steel, and the British love that. Um, oh, nice. They ran out of money. But also this ammunition and iron. Britain is one of our greatest trading partners due to this. But look at what's also high. Artillery, ammo, artillery, ammo, guns, ammo, 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 artillery, artillery. We are making dividends off of this, right? We may be subsidizing them, but we're definitely going to be getting some taxes off of this. And we just gotta keep on exporting, exporting, exporting. The more we export, the more dependent the world is on our weapons. Oh, wow. <clears throat> the Germans are at war with themselves, and not because it's Prussia or Germany versus Austria. It's Austria versus Austria, and Germany versus Germany. Now we take a look at our most profitable routes. It is, again, ammunition, guns. Artillery, ammunition, guns, sh well, sugar, apparently. Guns, guns, and ammunition. We are just profiting endlessly all over the place. Apparently, the Russians want poor summer. Bless you. The Chinese are an independent market once again. This is actually really good. So we click on the Chinese, and we're going to notice they need guns. They have a lot of arms industry, but they need artillery, they need munitions. They desperately need munitions, they need boats. The Russians now solely depend on us for artillery, and they still are dependent in a lot of aspects too. So what are we going to do? We're going to go to export, we are going to export artillery, ammunition, we're going to export steel, we're going to export steamers, Boats, oil, opium, tools, although, take away the, uh, well, opium's already going there. Uh, glass, groceries, hardwood, coffee, meat, luxury furniture. Chinese are going to be a huge market for us. Something we're gonna be worried about is we got these trade centers, right? These trade centers are where we're shipping out all these weapons, all these munitions and stuff, and this is gonna need a workforce. And well, if we run our people, that's gonna be a problem. Oh, I wonder where our biggest trade center is. Holy cow, Maine. Do you even have enough people? What are you shipping? I don't know. They are part of our iron export, but, and our ammo export. That iron export, holy, that is a lot of ships. Not actually that much revenue. We could definitely affect the British economy with that. New York is huge. Look at that. There is so much stuff we are exporting out. Holy wars. What the heck? The world's in shambles, it's in chaos, and things are looking a little spicy. Oh, we have our first black president. Nice. In 1895. Well, Ulysses Joplin, would you like to go to war? Uh, I don't even know if we have anywhere we want to own. Now, I took a little break, I had to go eat, we had to go shopping. But, I was thinking about it. I want the British and the rest of the world to be subservient to my my munitions, my arms, right? Everything I make. The British are very close to being subservient. We want 50% at least in each one. Uh, the French are subservient for ammunition. That's actually really good. Uh, not for guns, though. And not for artillery, although they don't seem to need a lot of artillery. I'll check that out in a second. The Germans are not subservient at all. The Austrians seem to have a lower amount than I remember them. Unless uh, they're in a rebellion. They're in a rebellion. <laughs> Give them a little bit. Now, one thing to check out, though, is... Can they even produce sulfur? It doesn't even look like they have sulfur, which is why they're not... 
That's exactly why they're not producing munitions. Because they don't have sulfur. The sulfur is in the other aspect. And that's exactly what I was thinking. So, the British... Like, okay, let, let's backtrack. Let's take a look. To make guns as it stands, these are the inputs that are needed. You need steel, tools, hardwood, coal, and oil to make bolt action rifles. Right? To make artillery. Lots of steel. Steel is probably the biggest one that we have to pay attention to. The other thing is... I close that up. Munitions. Munitions need explosives, lead, and coal. Right? Now, explosives, if you pay attention, come from chemical plants. Chemical plants, to be able to produce explosives, eventually need electricity, but that doesn't matter. They need sulfur, and they need quite a bit of it. So, without sulfur, they don't get explosives. Without explosives, they don't get ammo. Now, basically, the idea I have come up with, like, these nations, they're going to have sulfur. The French have sulfur in the colonies, but that's just the colonies. Some convoy raiding can very much prevent that. Russians have very little sulfur. Germany has plenty of sulfur, and that's going to be a problem. We won't be able to really take munitions from them, because they will have sulfur. But, explosions. Like explosives. If we take a look at the German market, German market, they produce domestically a bunch of explosives. They do. Why don't we export explosives to them? Right? Because domestically for us, we produce more. We produce a ton. We're the number one producer of explosives. Right? And why don't we export explosives everywhere? Why not to Russia? Why not to the French, the Spanish, the Ottomans? Let's export it everywhere. Likewise, steel. Let's take a look at the British market. The British, they make a ton of steel. The Germans, they make uh, not so much steel. They never make enough for themselves. Right? These places make steel. The French make steel. They all make steel. The British, on the other hand, they make steel. But a lot of the steel comes from us. They purchase it in order, in order to supplement the market. They do not have enough access in order to produce enough steel on their own. Like, because you get rid of that, they are getting closer and closer to 50%. This will jack up the price here, which is going to jack up the price down here with their weapons, making it so that even more expensive. If they're more expensive, they're going to buy more from us if we get rid of the steel trade. But more importantly, if we go to war, they're going to be even more screwed because they're going to produce less guns. That's how we're going to get it. So next, we're going to take steel, and we're going to export it to every major power. Right? All over Europe. Hardwood as well. Basically, anything that goes into these we want export. We want our industry to be what drives the prices. Now, the Italians have an embargo against us. We are actually just going to declare a rivalry against them. Our goal is basically to control the world economy through arms. Okay, we can basically decide who wins and who loses wars once we have full control of it. Because an embargo from us means you lose the war and your economy suffers. That is the whole goal of what we're doing. The Italians produce a lot for themselves. They don't import as much as we are like, although they're importing all their ammunition. All their ammunition, they get ammunition from us. So they, we cannot trade to them on our own accord, but they do trade with us. They prevent us from trading with them, but they can buy stuff from us if they want. So they produce all their ammunition outside of the market. Other than the Germans, we have influence on all those markets. So their ammunition is directly tied back to our market. At our marketplace. They have small arms. They're trading in from the French. They're ironclads. They're trading that from the French. So the French, we have a huge, uh, huge control over with some of these areas. Not as much as I would like, but more than enough. Now, the last element that I want to look at is ironclads, because controlling the seas is also important. The early Victoria 3 used to be able to produce them all, ironically. 
Um, and no way I will ever produce them. Now they do. We produce a ton of the ships. We do not produce enough to be the only provider. So by controlling the basic means of production across the world, producing in our own markets domestically and then shipping it out, we can control a whole bunch. 2,901 conscript battalions available. Holy moly. So population is just going up. We're getting 1.75 million per year. Oh my. Our, our military is unbearably large. We just need to have an economy to back it. Fence line lines. Ah, fence, you get yourself in a lot of trouble though. Alliance is a interesting offer. I I have an interesting place in mind. My name's Italy. You help me get Piedmont. By pressing this button, I start a chain of events that will determine the fate of all human history. Yes, buy ammunition from us. Oh, what the heck! My actions today will start the first. Great war. Oh, this is gonna be a big war. Ooh, this is gonna be interesting. The world is basically at war right now. There is a bunch of wars happening, and there's not much that we can do about it. Except for fighting one, which is what we're gonna do about it. Our economy continues to grow and grow and grow. Our investors are reinvesting, and that is what's gonna allow us to increase our debt ceiling. Which is going to fund this war. The first battles of the war have commenced. Germans versus Americans. Our defense is superior. And now their numbers dwindle. While we go on the offensive in Italy. Our conscripts are still recruiting, so they're not the main people on the front lines at this time. We raid their convoys off their coast. Their supply network will dwindle. We raid more convoys will cause their economies to collapse. After all, if we take a look at the Italians, specifically the market, their ammunition is still being imported by many, many different nations. And if you remember, the French and the Americans were a huge part of that, and now they do not have enough ammunition. So despite not being directly trade partners, their economy is collapsing. There is not enough boats for neither the Italians well, actually the Italians have enough boats, but ne the Germans do not. They simply cannot. Their economy is collapsing, and their ability to wage war goes with it. This is how we will win. The battles rage on in Europe. There's battles all over the world. Two massive wars, the British Empire versus the Russian Empire, the Civil War of Communist Austria versus Austria, that's actually a third war, and then the Americans and the French versus the German, Italian, and Chinese alliance. Our navies engage in the sea. The French, five, five ironclads versus 50, 60 enemy man of wars, and they dwindle fast. The French are losing against the Italian Iron Guards, but why did the Chinese even show up? Their ships cannot even penetrate. This entire front line is ours to command. The Germans are recoiling. They are being pushed back. The Americans advance, but not quite with enough troops. Suffer in Piedmont. The Germans and the Italians defend, but the Americans outnumber them with the French. Two and a half to one. War rages on. Cannons fire over the city. And the city is a cinder. Yet we go to the east. And we notice. The Qing are not safe. The wooden boats fall. To the great grand American navy. This navy filled with hundreds of thousands of servicemen. Ready to invade and take over Beijing in the coming months. As the last ship burns troops begin to land. The Chinese bewildered. The troops overwhelmed. Slowly but surely. But the Americans were only able to land so many. We will see if the uh, maneuver is able to
to secede. Piedmont is about to fall to the American forces. And with its capture, the Italians are beginning to lose spirit. The Germans hold the board of strong, but how many more attacks can they withstand? The Chinese seem to be warding off the first American attack. And a smaller skirmish occurs in the northern Italian countryside. Ulysses S. Grant versus uh, Calabania. The Germans are attacking the Americans. The Americans put up a strong defense, but the numbers are dwindling. Live around the conscription, this time in its most populous states. This is total war now. Devastation goes the Italian Alps. In the North Sea, German and United States boats battle it out, but they are outnumbered. 8 to 1. The French leave the war at untimely time. This is a peculiar situation. The French have surrendered, and we were able to land the naval invasions in time before that surrendering. Yes, that's what I get for taking the French on as an ally. The Americans have ran out of money recently. But they continue fighting forward. We had to declare bankruptcy. That's unhealthy. In the middle of the war, I began to demobilize and play the long game. We can wait. The French and the Brazilians declared war on me for Venezuela. Time to just wait it out. After some time, the Germans fell to civil war. Hey! We're just allies with the French, what the fuck? Uh, those Venezuela. Oh, <laughs> you give us Qing war operations if uh, we can liberate both of those. Despite being bankrupt, our forces landed in southern and then northern China. And we walked into Beijing because they're too spread apart. Patience is key. We can literally be broke as hell, and we'll still kick your motherfucking ass! <laughs> There's nothing you can do. <laughs> give you all of China, give me everything. Yeah, uh, sure, I'll give you my entire south. China is not happy. They're getting close to capitulation. China falls. <laughs> and Italy stands alone. So Italy, you now stand alone. Well, quite a bit of Italian armies over there. You know, actually, why would we raid? I have an idea. With the forces in Southeast Asia, Italy was vulnerable. And the invasions have begun. We're already inside of you, Italy. Unfortunate for you. Fortunate for me. You know how many people we can throw at you and simply not have enough to pay them? Oh my goodness, look at you. By yourself. Trembling. And willing to negotiate. But there is no negotiations, Italy. <laughs> there was never any negotiations. Our people are radical. World's radical. World's at war. And we're gonna be chilling. With the end of the Great War, I realized something. The performance of the game was suffering. I had made a mistake and forgotten to load up mods that would help with late game performance. Due to this, it was unbearably slow. So, we will not be able to see the United States go to 1936 today. But as it stands, our military industrial complex is large and is ready to enter the modern age if modern is uh, World War I and World War II technologies. Our military is strong. If each battalion is a thousand soldiers, we have millions standing behind our army. And we have enough weapons and enough ammo to ensure we can win any war. 
given enough time, I'm sure we would have been able to dominate every market in the globe and make sure more than half of the world's arms were produced by us. Mostly because, well, we could have forced it. If you enjoyed this, thank you. Leave a like if you want. Comment any ideas if uh, you want to see something else made. Write a comment on what was your favorite part. Depending on how well this does, I might make another. It took about a day to record and a day to uh, edit. It was fun though. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.